Hello people, how you doing? This is James Collins. Uh, we want to go ahead and uh, first and foremost give you a wonderful thanks for all the love and support that all of you have given me. Uh, we just launched TikTok yesterday, so we are really, really excited for that. Hopefully we can grow there as well. Um, we have been growing slow, but we are growing, so that's pretty exciting. We want to get to that 1,000 follower, subscriber um, benchmark, and hopefully we can do that. Um, so today I wanted to not only give you guys thanks, but also go ahead and focus on the past six months since we started. So many wonderful things have happened, both in the channel, my personal life, and also with the growth of uh, the approach that we're taking uh, with this channel. So uh, really, really exciting things that are coming next year. And uh, we definitely look forward to keeping on. Right now I got two cameras going here and I wanna just go ahead and really uh, relive some of the things that we have done with the channel in this past six months. Uh, and then also talk about some of the things that we are looking forward to do uh, in the next coming year. We have a lot of things planned. We have a few trips planned. So hopefully um, we can bring all of that to you. And I hope that it can be as much fun to you as it is for us. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, you know, it was really hard to put all the videos and all the highlights together. We cherish every single place that we have gone to and have had experiences, not only filming and then producing, but also just eating and also as well meeting the people there. Um, and I, we're just getting started. So I can't even imagine the things are, that are about to come in, in, in the future. Um, but it's, it's been a complete wonderful experience. Um, I perhaps may be gaining a little bit more weight, lost more hair, uh, but but it's all in uh, it's all in fun. So our top ten favorite experience of the year, our top ten highlights. So let's go ahead and dig in. The first one on the list is Beehive Cheese Company. Let's take a look. You know, with the Beehive Cheese Company, I really just launched myself in there, called them up, asked them if I can come film. I had had. Uh, no videos out, I think. I think maybe I've had one or two out. Uh, I filmed about four, but they were not published yet. So uh, they took a gamble on me and letting me come in with a little camera and, and not the best mic possible. So uh, kudos to them. We had a wonderful experience uh, meeting with Katie. She was our two tour guide and she showed us everything before we filmed and, then we, and even more when we came afterwards and she just knew everything about uh, cheese and the company and, and what Beehive really stand for. High quality cheddar cheese and thinking outside the box when it comes to uh, cheddar cheeses. So had a lot of wonderful experience and we definitely tried a lot of cheeses off camera, which I feel is has been a mistake sometimes of me of not filming some of those small snippets uh, we are definitely focusing on bringing more quality videos um, to the channel, but then also just for our own personal uh, worth, our own personal personal gain, right? We want to continue to just be better each time. And you know, I'm, I'm, I speak to different people, and I'm being told that I, I'm pushing myself too hard on the channel. I want to drive it to um, to success too far, uh, too fast, and. Um, I need to just be more patient and, and, and that's fine, but I, I think it's very important that we just have a mindset that uh, that we need to just constantly keep growing. What's next? I already learned one thing. I learned how to edit. I learned how to film. I learned how to adjust some things with the video and uh, music. All that stuff is brand new to me. I, I learned it earlier this year. We decided to launch in June and um, I've learned a lot. Um, there's definitely so much room for for improvement and so many things to um, to really add and bring value to the channel, um, but also to to you guys. Because if I don't I don't bring quality, it's simple enough that you just won't watch it. Uh, so we highly recommend to try Beehive Cheese Company if there is not a local shop that carries their cheeses. You could definitely order them online. 
I would definitely uh, advise that you try the coffee rub with lavender. Absolutely a different take. And also their, um, their mushroom, their shiitake rub that, that they have, absolutely uh, amazing. And if you're a big fan of truffles, go with that as well. Um, so those were some of our favorites. Uh, and we enjoy the time being with, with uh, Katie and the Beehive Cheese Company um, team and, and seeing their cheese process and, and their own unique style. Okay, now the second one on the list is by far the hardest, the most sacrificial, the most expensive, the most die-hard, reckless, I almost gave up type of shooting production that I have had in all of the videos and yet it brought me the most uh, subscribers, the most views and that is the Asian Festival. So I had planned this already for about two and a half months. We went to Chinatown Market and there were flyers everywhere of this Asian Festival. It was going to be the 45th year. There was going to be a lot of people there and I thought well that this is wonderful. I'm being told by several people that there are tons of food vendors there and that was not the case there was a handful and I think out of all the festivals that I have gone to uh, except for um, the the Utah State Fair that thing was massive this has by far been the biggest one and the thing is that both both fairs uh, both festivals were shot in the same place the difference was that the Youth State Fair had a the whole entire park to the to itself. Like there were so many things going on, but they had so much ground to cover. While the Asian Festival had a small sector, and there were thousands of people there, thousands, and only about I want to say maybe twelve food vendors for all these thousands of people. If that, I was told that later on some more came in the in, in, towards the afternoon. But I just couldn't take it. So I found myself going to the biggest line, the longest line in the whole entire festival, and that was the Yum Yum Chuck. These people had constant just lines of up to 80 people at a time. And the, you know, the more I kept moving forward in the line, the line kept getting longer and longer. And um, by the time I got there, there were a few things. I was able to try um, a few things that I have not had before. One of those were sisig. I never had pork sisig before. And it was uh, really new to me. I I've never tried it in the way that they made it. The other one was, it sounds silly, but I've never had um, the, the actual vegetarian or vegetable um, lupias and I've had them with meat before and usually it has a lot of vegetables in it um, and but this one it was a it was a fluke I, I never order a vegetable lumpia I actually order uh, I believe it was pork that they had and I ended up getting um, or beef and I ended up getting veggie so that was a new experience um, that was pretty cool now their adobo um, chicken I've had some sorts of different adobos, as, you know, in some different ways uh, and in styles, but never their way. That was definitely by far the first time um, I've actually tried a Filipino chicken adobo, um, and and I, I didn't know that there were different versions of it. For me, adobo was adobo, and I've had um, you know some in South America and and maybe some Mexican style adobo, and it's it's a bit. There's not that much difference, but there are some similarities, definitely in color. Um, so that was pretty cool. And then the lechon kawali. I have had pork in almost every possible way that you can think of. I have had every single part of the pork. Um, it's by far one of my favorite land animals. Um, and um, so the way that they use their, their pork belly to make this lechon, um, it was definitely unique. Uh, for me, lechon, when I think of lechon, I think of the whole pig. Uh, nice roasted uh, pig. 
Um, so when I saw this, I was expecting more of that, like a, like a nice roasted crispy skin type of, um, of pig. But when I, when I looked it up, um, pork koali means pan. Um, and hopefully I'm not, I'm not mistaken here, but koali means pan. And that's what it was. It was a pan, uh, fried pork and it was just crispy, delicious. That koali sauce definitely. Uh, made my day. Um, I didn't care about how hot it was anymore or the wind that kept just blowing everything away. Uh, it ended up being a, a, a wonderful meal after a really rough uh, day. So, um, and, and it paid off. Uh, so hopefully, I don't know, maybe that's, that's, the, that's the idea. I need to have more rough days when I shoot and not so much fun and, and hopefully I can get more uh, subscribers. Now, talking about subscribers, I want to go ahead and take the time now and ask you to please subscribe, share with your friends. I promise way more things are coming, more wonderful quality things are coming. This channel, we're going to do it, people, so might as well just grow with us. Stick with us in the beginning because we, we're, we're, I'm not going to stop. It's going to happen. So either you're going to see all of the internet with my face on it and you hating me or you're gonna just see the internet with my face on it and you liking me and growing with me uh, and hopefully it could be the latter and we can grow together and, and, and really show you more places so please go ahead and uh, like share go ahead and go to TikTok and like us go to um, also Instagram at star for more and we have wonderful things there as well sometimes that are not being shown in our YouTube channel and let's go ahead and get to a thousand and hopefully by the end of the year five thousand five thousand maybe ten thousand um, so let's go ahead and keep growing together let's do it okay next up on our top 10 list and again these are in no way in our favorite order in whichever form i'm not doing them you know my favorite one or anything like that it's just our general top 10. um so let's go ahead and and, and focus on our uh, third top 10 coming up is el pollo rollo pollo rollo family owned business uh 20 plus years and the light of the of the business would be Edgar and, and his wife. Um, and let me tell you that these are hardworking people. They have built a franchise-like business. It could be replicated easily. And let me tell you that their chicken is delicious. And their tortas, uh, I mean, I was just blown out. Really, really good uh, um, tortas. It was a beef torta. And I really just went there for the chicken and Edgar just started piling on and piling on. There was a lot of things that I didn't, I didn't even eat in the, in the video. Um, the highlight of the video was definitely their story and who they were and, and how they came about to have um, such a successful business and a business that can easily be multiplied. They are currently looking for investors to start investing on um, on their their business uh, so that they can open two three ten locations hopefully nationwide um, pretty good chicken and pretty good um, and tortas and, and also tacos as well everything I ate was was really fresh homemade and delicious but their story they're hard working people that that just stuck with it they, they've known each other for a good portion of their, their life and it's always been around a restaurant um, so, um, if you haven't watched the video, it's by far my longest video. You should watch it. You should hear the story and how everything came about. So that's our top three, uh, or not a top three, but I guess our third on the list. Let's be clear. Our third on the list. All right. Coming in at four, another Filipino freaking business that just, I learned everything there that day. Uh, I learned how to say salamat po. Yeah, that's right. If you don't know what that is, Google it. You'll be surprised. Um, the other thing I learned about Turron, BFF Turron. I even I forgot to share the name of the business. The name of the business is BFF Turron. And it's ran by an older couple and I believe I'm told uh, some friends as well. And they have a almost cafeteria type of 
uh, you choose what you want type of uh, concept and they have different types of Filipino concepts which by the way I have to go back and try some more we, we tried a little handful of what they had there and um, just the warmth of these people my, my goodness I mean they have built this environment of trust of happiness of joy of, of just welcome I uh, mean people into the restaurant like so many people that kept coming in were just friends with them they were able to communicate in such a um, hospitable way uh, so wonderful experience just out of that but then the food that that, that we tried the turron the different types of um, stews that they had or, or adobo I tried the the chonkawali uh, adobo pork we tried the hulu hulu we tried the uh, the Express, uh, we also tried, um, what else, we, tr we ended up trying quite a few, oh the lumpias, this time we did try the beef lumpias um, and that was delicious so uh, I, I have to go again, I know that I have a huge Filipino following um, I'm sorry that in the area that I'm at right now there's not that many places to go for Filipino food I did find one more, I'm gonna try that out um, but you know, doesn't matter if I'm here and there's no Filipino, I have to go to the Filipino people, the Filipino places, whether that's California that's just a few hours away, or Colorado right next to me, or even Vegas down south, uh, or really south, I guess, west. Um, with that said, we definitely want to go to the Philippines. That has been a place in my bucket list for years. Um, so I can't wait to bring uh, some more of that to you all soon. Um, so that's our number three Now our number four spot on the list here. Let's see. I don't know. How do I say this? Maybe I'm thirsty. Maybe I'm not Hmm Hmm How about Los Tapatios people? Come on. I have to give it up to Christian Luna and what he's done with his concept the man is killing it it's killing it. He should soon, if he doesn't do it, I'm gonna be upset with you, Chris. You have to open franchises, my man. You have already have it down. You have multiple restaurants down already on your belt and your product sells. People love your product. It is really straightforward. You know, why have a restaurant just around Bidia? There's no chicken, there's no pork, no lamb, no fish, just beef. Bidia and with that he's created a menu of mulitas, of tacos, of quesadillas, of freaking ramen people um, and I, I later find out by the way with the whole ramen I made this big thing in the video um, and I have I, I had seen it once or twice somewhere else but apparently you sell Bidia it's like a regular thing that you should have a ramen uh, you know bowl of, of, of Bidia in there um, which I still find, whether it's common or not, I still find a bit uh, bizarre on how the Bidia broth and the meat could actually be better than some of the ramens out there. Sorry, it's true. I mean, what, what do you want me to say? Go try it if you don't believe me. Um, so, Los Tapatillos, just wonderful concept, uh, hardworking again, family owned, and really have a wonderful um, concept going on there. The, the unique thing about Christian is that he he put him, he put himself in a place of um, really questioning why not go this route. Like if you see Chick Fil A, it's all just chicken. If you see um, In and Out, just beef burgers, a small little tiny menu, crumble cookies, freaking just cookies, right? Um, and there's so many other concepts uh, like that, raising canes, just tenders. Well, why not just just Bidia? And it, it's it's gone well for them, and it's gone well for the people um, uh, Los Tapatios. And uh, you know, the other thing too that I've noticed is that this business started, um, and some of these businesses that I mentioned have started out in Utah, and in Utahns are very straightforward with their food. You don't want to mess with it. You don't want to add too much to it. You don't want to complicate things uh, with them. Keep it simple um, and, uh, and and it will go well. So um, he's definitely leveraged on that. So good for him. Okay, number 
five. I have not made a full video on this, but I have shared some clips in the channel and I have also shared some clips on Instagram and that is Mastra Italian Bistro. Let me tell you, they got stuff going on there. And look, a lot of people, uh, especially Italians and, and Peruvians, uh, maybe even some Greek and, and Japanese and whatnot, uh, they are just super, super focused on tradition with, with food. And let me tell you that, um, that it's very important to keep tradition, very important. I'm not saying that it's not, it's really important. But here's the thing, when you're bringing food from another nation to this ginormous melting pot that is the US, you have to accommodate um, some things. So is it extremely traditional? I want to say that for the past few years, it's maybe perhaps one of the most traditional um, um, Italian bistros or uh, restaurants um, that I've been to. Um, do they add more meat to their bolognese than they, <laughs> they should? Yeah. And do they add way more Parmesan? Yeah. But um, other than that, like it's spot on. It's not overly seasoned with just tomato sauce. The focus is the meat. Uh, when it comes to their pastas, their focaccia, forget about it. It's absolutely freaking delicious. I have not had a focaccia this good ever in, in, in my life. It's just hands down. I sold focaccia when I had my um, little restaurant out in Florida. Um, I, I, I used to have it and I, I would buy it in restaurants uh, everywhere I found it. I would cook with it. I would create recipes with it. I have had the best bakeries in Florida uh, make focaccia for me. Um, I mean, it's just, I've had really wonderful focaccias and this one's by far the, the, the best ones. Really good olive oil, really good focaccia, really good sandwiches. And then at dinner, it kind of turns into this pasta adventure slash also focusing on their focaccia, which is really, really amazing. And uh, did I say their focaccia is freaking amazing. Dude, it's you just go go to Mastras, and uh, I cannot wait to make a full video uh, on them. And I hear that the chef has a pretty cool story. So that's our number fifth spot. Okay, we are halfway there. So I want to go ahead and take some time and uh, just share some 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 things, some questions that people have asked me. And, um, and, and pretty much just try to uh, address them as best uh, as I can. I'm, asked, uh, I'm being asked if I still cook. I know I, I technically I don't cook professionally in, in a kitchen. Um, the nightmares and, and, and the dreams that I would have of tickets coming in and, and just waking up on sweats are no longer happening. So I am I'm definitely uh, out. Um, I tried to be out uh, a few years ago and uh, the transition was extremely hard. Uh, this time around, uh, it was a bit different. It still took a long time, but uh, no, I do not. I, I do uh, business consultations um, for small businesses and medium-sized businesses. But then from time to time, I will do um, um, just culinary consultations. I will sell recipes and and just walk through people um, uh, with the issues that they got going on in their businesses. Um, so that could be a restaurant, that could be a, a wholesale business, that, that could be a, a franchise that's trying to launch, whatever it might be. I do that um, um, on the side. I haven't done anything since April uh, of this year, and I've kind of put a pause on, on that right now. I want to focus more on the channel and then uh, definitely my my main current uh, bringing home the bacon job, which um, I actually really enjoy uh, meeting with business owners and um, and, and helping them with uh, with their uh, business needs. So uh, I feel like I'm I'm pretty good at that and and um, and and do well. So so that's one thing. The other thing is I'm asked if I have plans in in really just going to more places and. <clears throat> the short answer to that is yes, uh, I, I do. 
my job does provide me with the freedom to do that um, uh, to do the the traveling aspect of, of the channel so yes it's definitely something that not only do we have in mind but we already have planned to do so um, so one trip is for sure it's going to be in Peru that's gonna be later on in the year um, um, I also we also have planned to go to California Washington and uh, and then Vegas uh, and then have a, a stint in Miami which we will have one in Florida not just in Miami uh, but the other ones may be paused since we are uh, having a baby in a month and a half less than a month and a half so pretty exciting stuff so I think our hands will be mainly full with that and we had to put those extra trips on on pause right now um, so it's not that we don't want to or that we can't it's more of we have to just um, consider the baby and hopefully I, I get to show the baby uh, baby girl to you guys um, so so that's that's one thing um, and then the other thing is do I ever uh, hate a meal or dislike a place I guess trash that I have to say about places and the, the answer is yes and no uh, <laughs> uh, there are a lot of places that are are bad uh, that we go to that we tried again we're new to Utah um, and uh, and then we just we just moved again in Utah uh, not too I mean about half an hour away from where we were living but um, so there are a lot of bad places uh, that we do eat at but I, 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 I the whole point of the channel is for me to show you guys food uh, and different types of styles of food and and you know uh, even in some of the places that we have filmed I think they are pretty respectable um, we have not I have not put something on screen that's completely horrible um, are there are, are they some of the best things in the world um, no not not all of them have been um, but they are really uh, respectable and good there have been things that we have filmed and we just have chosen uh, not to um, not to put it. So, was it a waste of production? Well, no. I mean, we ate, we we, we ate the food and stuff, and um, got to learn a little bit about what we didn't like and what we didn't want to do, and um, and also um, we put ourselves in a position that we respected what we're trying to bring and and produce. So. As far as production goes, I mean, there hasn't been any like waste of money. Technically, I haven't made any money in any of these videos. I'm not monetized yet. Hear that? Yet. Um, I'm not being monetized yet. So it hasn't really been like a complete waste of time going to some of these places and, and not really putting them on, on camera and stuff. But but there's definitely, have there has been um, at least a handful, at least one handful of places where we're just like, nah, it's just not worth it. Let's just take a picture. Like, I can't even, I can't even go, I can't even order one thing in this menu that I can at least take a picture of and, um, and just, ex you know, go with it and, and make some type of clip with it. So, um, with, with, with that said, you know, if I go to places, we order a few different things. Uh, sometimes we try to go beforehand and eat at the place first and see if we like it uh, That has not always been the case like Park City, which is definitely on my list uh, That was all I went there first time shot when the second plate to the second place and shot uh, There was it, it was really uh, Organic most of the videos are but this one we, we there was no plan. We just went there um, so and then lastly last question is why is it that uh, Michelle never appears in the camera? Well, Michelle is more of a, um, I guess, back, back of the curtains coordinator. She does help me produce. She gives me a lot of ideas. Uh, she is definitely, definitely more familiar with the YouTube world than I am, um, and, and Instagram and TikTok. So um, she she gives me a lot of uh, ideas and and. Uh, keeps me in line of things to say and, and perhaps sometimes uh, more importantly things not to say um, but other than that it's, it's just just her and I um, 
and and sometimes um, we 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 do outsource uh, maybe some some things to edit uh, and 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 technology to help us out with the videos, but um, right now it's just just her and I. All right, let's go ahead and continue. Santos Tacos. Santos Tacos. Santos Taco was featured in our video uh, of Block Party 2700, which is a food hall. And they are absolutely just, just cool uh, people, cool place, humble. And we saw, uh, we, we really liked everything that was there. Um, was it the best? Let's just say that is worth going, okay? But, um, but Santos Tacos really stood out. They were uh, the most unique in the, in the, out, of, out of the four bunches that we ate there. Um, and they were just really friendly. They were the ones that brought in more of, yeah, let's go ahead and film us and stuff like that. Be known to me, not be known to me. Um, I had no idea that they actually had been in diners, drive-ins, and dive. And, uh, and, and they, they did their stuff. And I've, I've come to learn as well that I can actually do multiple videos in this channel and just highlighting some of the things that Triple D has done in Utah. There's a ton of them. Oh my gosh, there's so many. There's, uh, there's at least over uh, over a dozen places here. Crap, man, they, they've they've done so many um they've done so many things in here, which I'm not surprised. There there are a lot of diners. There's a lot of dives here. Um, uh, so so. It's it's it, he, they were one of those, and let me tell you that their chingon chingon taco, which is a mixture of meats, um, and and also their their fish taco, which I was it's tilapia. I'm sorry, I hate tilapia to death. I, I don't even know why they sell that. They uh, they did something magical with that fish. I don't know if it was a if it was a mistake. I don't know if it was luck that day or what happened, but um, but that fish taco was it was awesome, and I purposely ate it last too just to see if it would maintain the crisp and uh, they did <laughs> good stuff shout out to everyone there and um, and and I look forward to go back I've gone back once more uh, just to eat really quick so then the other one is the Peruvian festival now this was another festival that I had not ever gone to here I had no idea what I was going to expect and uh, we were just hoping for, for the best. Uh, another hot day, but it was a s smaller venue, um, definitely more compact. And quite frankly, um, I was surprised that there was even a Peruvian festival. But I'm told that outside of our, our Mexican friends, um, that Peruvians and, and also Brazilians are really the, the, the second uh, largest, the second and third largest uh, population here in um, Hispanic population in, in Utah so that was pretty cool we had a wonderful time there everything that we ate was just absolutely uh, the, the delicious um, I really surprised because most of the things there were actually better than and I'm sorry to say this and this is maybe one of the reasons why you haven't seen more Peruvian places in my channel here because there are way more places that are from Peru um, most Peruvian places in Utah are not that good. Uh, I might get some hate out of that, I don't know. But, um, but the food there was better than the most, the most restaurants, uh, um, Peruvian restaurants uh, here in Utah. So, uh, we had wonderful anticuchos. We had a wonderful um, barrel cooked chicken uh, that was just flawless. They don't have, a, none of these places have restaurants. Um, except for the the ones that we had the picarones with, and that was El Rincón, El Rico Sanguchón. Let me say this right, people. El Rico Sanguchón de Chalo. I speak Spanish, and I, that that's hard for me to pronounce. El Rico Sanguchón de Chalo. And it was a battle between both of them because guess what? We finished that wonderful festival with picarones, which are the... Peruvian uh, donuts um, uh, and they're just crispy delicious sweet with their caramel that they put on and oh my gosh I just I want some right now and but El, El Rico Sanguchón is actually an, an actual restaurant and 
<clears throat> they are in West Valley. They focus on brosters, which are just fried chicken sandwiches, and that's their specialty. And we've done a video of them and really cool people. So we found them before it was actually even a before it was even a restaurant. They they would just uh, lease out the kitchen, I think, on the weekends, and they would just sell their sandwiches there out of a me Mexican uh, restaurant. And um, essentially, they they bought out the place, um, and uh, now they are that they're full on uh, restaurants and. I, I don't know any time that we have gone there and, and it has not not been packed. The place just really hits home. It's really like street style hip hop uh, type of place. Uh, you can definitely definitely go and, and watch your soccer game there and, and it's just a cool little spot with cool vibes. Okay, last but not least, this is one of those that the filming was just not up to par. I had a whole thing planned out for this place and I'm gonna do it at some point. Um, but hands down, when talking about a full, well-rounded restaurant, right? Not just, not just a restaurant that uh, focuses on specific items, as wonderful as that is, but it's a well-rounded restaurant, right? Casa, La Casa del Tamal, the house of tamales. And by far, hands freaking down. And I don't care what other uh, critics say, I don't care what other uh, award-winning, um, I guess, uh, delusional uh, Utah awards are there. This is the best Mexican restaurant in perhaps all of Utah, perhaps for sure, all of the Salt Lake City County, Utah County, and whatever the heck other counties are there. Um, everything's on on point. Their videos are on point, their tamales are on point, their sauces, their um, their speed, their, um, their quesadillas, um, their, their staff, their, their drinks, everything is just absolutely um, delicious their soups or consommes I mean I can just go on and on anyways that is my top 10 if you have a favorite one if you're even watching this go ahead and let me let me know which one should you like the most let me know things that you want to go ahead and see in the channel things that you are looking forward to do uh, for us to do actually and uh, maybe things that um, should be described more or maybe i don't know tell me james i don't know you, you need to lose some weight whatever shave uh stop wearing a freaking white hat um i don't know whatever the heck you think i should be doing or you like um let me know and and and, and i'll do it as long as i i can maintain some type of dignity and uh in, in the human race uh and it's not illegal or will send me to jail or be Put me in a disgraced form in front of my future daughter or wife or my faith or my family <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll do it and uh, definitely uh, it has to make me uh, hungry I have to start for it and it has to be food related um, and I cannot uh, I cannot wait for 2023 thank you for all those who have stayed faithful faithful and loyal and that have helped us grow uh, this past six months. I look forward to another six more months. And then if I do get to a thousand, I may do a live video. I was going to do this one live, but I'm just like, let's be real. I don't know how many people will watch this, but there's definitely more to come. Please like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram. We wanna start growing there too. Follow us on TikTok as well. We're gonna go ahead and see how that how that works out for us. So until then, people, you know, stay starving for more. Peace.